Hi, everyone. <clears throat> I'm just stepping out of my shower, so apologies if I look completely wet, which I am. <laughs> um, let me just um, bring our followers from YouTube and let me just start the, um, the YouTube um, live on YouTube functionality. I hope all of you are well on this uh, Monday morning, Monday afternoon, sorry, on the 9th of May. Okay, go live. Right. So it's setting up you, your meeting for YouTube Live. Okay. So um, the first, I mean, today we, we are talking about arbitration and creative industries. So this is Krifovi's live webinar. And so how to actually make the most of ADR, which stands for Alternative Dispute Resolution. Um, indeed, in arbitration, in, for the creative industries, the uh, arbitration and mediation, which are the two um, most prominent ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution means and tools are very important. Why? Because as you probably had gathered by um, the picture I set out on our latest um, Krefovi's new letter, everything is supposed to be confidential when a, a dispute is being resolved through mediation or arbitration. So in, in, unlike the process in courts, in civil courts, which uh, by default is um, public, so anyone uh, stepping into the, uh, the court uh, office can actually, a court building can actually attend a, a court hearing. Mediation and arbitration are uh, shred um, under uh, secrecy and confidentiality, which is great for creative industries, in particular the entertainment sector, the film, the music industry, because um, reputation is so important in those sectors that um, any story, any dispute that might tarnish such reputation needs to be uh, kept under wraps and, um, and uh, remain confidential. So, so yes, yeah, so um, the fact that arbitration and mediation are coming more and more to the front for the creative industries and becoming more employable tools, so to speak, to resolve disputes in the in the creative sectors is very important. And I wanted to uh, uh, to discuss that with you today. First point is what are the latest advances and trends in the ADR community and institutions to cater to the needs of the creative industries. Well, an interesting aspect of, uh, of um, the development of ADR, so mediation and arbitration, is that more and more alternative dispute resolution institutions and practices have specialty panels of neutrals which specialize in creative industries. So what are um, alternative dispute resolution institutions? Well, basically, for the last, I'd say, 50, 60 years, quite a, a few organizations have either set up uh, as a standalone um, ADR institutions who have created a, a department in, uh, in, this, in, this, uh, in this body, which um, basically manages mediations and arbitrations. So let's take some examples. The World Intellectual Property Office has as its first mission which I, if I understand correctly, has, has been set up by there's a relationship with uh, with UNESCO. Uh, uh, I, th I think so. It's I think it's and the ONU, the the the, uh, um, the 
ONU, UNO, I think you say in English, Organisation des Nations Unies, so United Nations Organisation, has set up the WIPER, the World Intellectual Property Office, which is based in Geneva in Switzerland. And so one of the main functions of WIPER is actually to extend um, trademarks and other intellectual property rights in various countries. Okay, so um, you can actually use the WIPO process to, through the Madrid Protocol and Convention to extend your French trademark in all the 27 member states of the European Union, plus you could also do the UK, etc., and all other um, countries and member states which are party to the, uh, to the Madrid Protocol. So this is one of the main functions of WIPO. However, WIPO has also set up two arbitration uh, bodies, one relating to uh, the, um, the film and media sector and another one relating to the art sector. And actually I'm, a, I'm a, 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 a registered as a neutral, as, a, as an arbitrator and as a mediator for both, for both uh, uh, WIPO panels one for film and, um, and movies and, um, and the media, and the other one for artifacts and, and art and cultural uh, affairs. And um, there are also, as I was saying, some standalone ADR uh, institutions, such as uh, AAA, uh, uh, the American Association of Arbitration, which has an international body called ICDR. And uh, this, for example, is a, uh, is a standalone um, mediation and arbitration uh, institution. So in the last 60, I'd say 70 years, there's been a big development of, um, of ADR institutions because this way of resolving disputes through secrecy, through confidentiality, and also um, through, with, through private means, because the public courts are not involved, has become more and more popular. And uh, um, what is great is that these ADR institutions are setting up more and more panels of uh, neutrals. So a neutral is a person who has um, a lot of expertise in mediation and arbitration, and therefore is going to be taking the, the, the place of, um, in an arbitration of a judge, um, either as a, as a, as a sole judge or, or sole arbitrator or in a tribunal of free arbitrators. So that's called an, uh, uh, an arbitration tribunal. So um, neutrals also have expertise in addition to the alternative dispute resolution expertise in how to manage an arbitration, how to uh, conduct a, a mediation. They also have some sometimes some expertise in particular industrial sectors and in the last let's say five to yeah five years uh perhaps to 10 years a lot of adr institutions have have sought have been looking for this kind of neutral uh, who is able to not only be an expert in mediation and arbitration, but also be an expert in the film and TV sector, in the music sector, in the art sector, um, in the um, uh, tech technology sector, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is one of the um, basic latest advances and trends in the ADR community and institutions, which is that more and more um, panels of uh, specialized neutrals are being set up in those ADR institutions. So let's just uh, mention a few examples. Well, last, uh, I mean, at the end of, uh, of uh, 2019, beginning of 2020, the Court of Arbitration for Art, CAFA, was set up in the Netherlands as a specialized arbitration and mediation tribunal exclusively dedicated to resolving art law disputes. So for example, this CAFA is in direct competition with the uh, WIPO's art um, uh, uh, panel that I just mentioned before, for example. So now when you have an art dispute that you want to resolve out of court, you have an option. Either you go to WIPO at the art panel or you actually could go to CAFA. And 
Um, I, I am actually registered as an arbitrator and mediator on CAFA's panel of neutrals, as well as actually on WIPO's art uh, and, uh, and media and film TV panels. And um, recently as well, the in Independent Film and Television Alliance, which is called IFTA, which is based in Los Angeles in the US, um, has decided to uh, devolve the management of its long-standing panel of entertainment law-focused arbitrators to AAA ACDR, ICDR, which is the, um, uh, the American-based ADR center that I mentioned before. And this is because, as explained by Susan Cleary, the general counsel of, uh, of IFTA, IFTA, IFTA's management and uh, legal team want to focus, you know, on um, basically supporting the, uh, the members who are uh, independent film and uh, TV uh, uh, production companies, and therefore they wanted to uh, outsource the management of the, the panel of, uh, of um, uh, entertainment focused neutrals um, to um, ICDR AAA. Um, and I, uh, therefore, as a, as a member of uh, the IFTA uh, uh, neutral panel, I was uh, inducted into the uh, uh, AAA ICDR and the Zemin panel in February 2022 during a mandatory case man management training conducting on Zoom, um, along with most other arbitrators from the IFTA, uh, IFTA panel. So these are two examples of um, specialized and focused um, uh, panels of neutrals who have an expertise in a particular creative field, which recently have been set up. But it's not all. There are also, um, for example, the um, Silicon Valley Arbitration and Mediation Center, which, um, while not being an ADR institution uh, uh, in itself, has he's, he's, uh, he's publishing a, a list of uh, 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 basically technology, technology experts who are um, uh, potential neutrals for um, either mediations or arbitrations involving uh, technology companies. So this is called the Tech List and it's published each year by the Silicon Valley Arbitration and Mediation Center, SVAMC, which is based in, um, um, in um, North uh, California, close to San Francisco, I think, to the Silicon Valley. Obviously, um, so so these are two of the of the of the latest advances and trends in the uh, ADR community to cater to the needs of uh, creative industries. Um, so, what are the best alternative dispute resolution tools and strategies creators can use in order to make the most of the latest advances in arbitration and mediation of disputes? This is, was the second point that we wanted to touch on today. Well, um, obviously, it's really important if you want to be able to um, uh, to to uh, resolve any dispute by way of uh, of uh, mediation or uh, and or arbitration. It's important in your contract in your commercial agreement that you are going to sign with your counterparty that you include a clause in uh, relation to you know, uh, jurisdiction, um, it, we, you include a clause which sets out that actually in case of a dispute, this would be um, resolved uh, by, through the exclusive ju jurisdiction of this particular ADR uh, institution. So you could say, this, um, in case of, um, of dispute, the parties would first have to um, um, attend a mediation organized by uh, AAA ICDR um, in, in the, uh, uh, by selecting one of the, um, of the neutrals listed on the um, tech panel of ICDR. And, um, and um, uh, should such mediation fail, then the parties will um, select a, uh, a, 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 tri a tribunal of three arbitrators from the ICDR uh, AAA 
technology, technology panel in order to resolve the uh, uh, dispute uh, by way of arbitration. And then you also need to mention in this clause the law which is going to govern the uh, arbitration and also the forum in which particular geographical um, place this, uh, this um, uh, arbitration is going to take place. And so what is quite interesting actually, just to rebound on this, uh, on this last point is that despite the fact that uh, you need to have a forum, uh, be it New York or London or Los Angeles or Paris to your arbitration, Nowadays, one of the uh, most important ADR tool uh, that uh, is being used, especially in the aftermath of COVID, where people travel less, is that um, uh, audiovisual and uh, conference uh, uh, tools are being used a lot. So Zoom, on which I am actually registering this, um, this uh, um, presentation, is being used uh, an, uh, enormously so that the parties can actually have the court, the, the arbitration, the arbitral hearings with the uh, with the arbitral tribunal or with the sole arbitrator online in an efficient way, which is cost saving. Um, it's also easier when uh, you have parties who are on different continents, so the US, uh, Asia, etc. It's easier to actually organize such a, such a Zoom. Uh, 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 Zoom based court hearing. And also, what is great with these uh, uh, video conference tools is that you can actually record the, um, the court hearing, it's, sorry, the arbitral hearing, which means that this saves money because then you don't need to have a, uh, a secretary who is taking notes and tra taking transcripts of everything that is being said by the parties and uh, uh, the um, arbitral tribunal during the hearing because, because you can record everything through Zoom and then distribute it to uh, everyone um, involved in the, in the matter. So yeah, so these are great uh, new ADR tools and, and strategies that um, uh, can be used by, uh, by creative entrepreneurs to make sure that their uh, affairs are are uh, managed, you know, in a, in a commercially tight agreement. But also, if a dispute arises, then it is possible to resolve this dispute efficiently, in a confidential manner, and um, also in a way that uh, you, you know the uh, the arbitrators are going to, to take a fair and um, and um, impartial approach to the dispute. Indeed, uh, quite a lot of uh, parties in the creative industries, especially in the last few years where the states have been far too prominent, you know, and imposing um, a lot of uh, um, restrictions on the life of, of individuals at large, um, a lot of, um, of parties and, and creatives are concerned that public courts are not independent and also lack impartiality. Well, that is also a great way to go around this if you um, have the ability to select your own arbitrator um, with, the, uh, with the counterparty with whom you have this conflict, this dispute, then it, it, it's, it is, it's reassuring for the parties to, to know that in arbitration, they can actually select the, uh, their own arbitrators to decide on the fate of your dispute. and. Uh, and conflict. Same goes for a mediation. The parties select and pick and choose their own mediator. So of course that means that um, um, the mediators and arbitrators need to uh, disclose any potential conflict of interest that they may have at the uh, at the very beginning when they are uh, informed that they are have been chosen for the uh, for the arbitration or mediation. Um, but 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 this ability to actually select your own so to speak, you know, judge um, is is uh, reassuring, comforting to, uh, to to the parties. Um, and um, let me see whether there are any other tools that worth mentioning. Well, yeah, in the back of the, of the 2019 COVID crisis, a lot of public courts as well. Uh, in addition to having this sometimes lack of impartiality, they also have an enormous backlogs of cases that they have been unable to uh, to uh, 
to deal with and to manage during the last two years. So there's a very big backlog, which means that the the, uh, the, the matters keep the stay on the docket of uh, this, this public courts forever. So this is also why there has been a boost in, um, in arbitration in the last few years, because um, parties want to have a quick and efficient and uh, and um, and swift resolution to their uh, to their disputes, and they also want to be able to uh, have these virtual hearings, which and uh, electronic case management methods, and um, and that sadly is not something that the public courts have done at all. They refuse to change. They refuse to do public uh, 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 sorry uh, video hearings, except in in rare criminal cases. But otherwise, you have to go to court. What do you do if you're on lockdown in your own country and you can't move? It's it's been very difficult, and yet sadly, the public courts have not changed. You know, and instead there's this massive backlog which has uh, cropped up in, in on their docket. So that's why also the, the creative industries are are using. Um, uh, either mediation and or arbitration way more than before. So there's a, another ADR institution which has a funny example actually um, uh, about, about how um, celebrity, uh, celebrities who are you know, uh, legal savvy are using arbitration uh, can make the most of, of ADR. So Chris Paul, who is the CEO of uh, the Los Angeles-based Judicial Arbitration and Mediation Service, which is called JAMS, which is one of the top uh, arbitration bodies in the world, uh, in particular for entertainment matters and, uh, and commercial matters, bragged during an interview uh, that even the uh, Kardashian's sisters are using JAMS services to resolve a commercial disputes. So if you refer to my article called Arbitration Creative Industries, what's new that I um, emailed you about a month ago, you will be able to see that indeed the Kardashian sisters have obtained a, um, an, arbit an arbitral uh, award against one of a uh, licensees so they are the licensors and the, one of the licensees who did not comply with the terms of a uh, uh, license agreement where, where they were able to use the Kardashian names, they didn't deliver on uh, paying the royalties due to the, uh, to the three uh, Kardashian sisters. And um, so this arbitral award, this arbitral award um, handed down by Jams was um, in favor of the three Kardashians and it's been contested in, in court afterwards by um, by this uh, licensee unsuccessfully um, as it was uh, as it was revealed a few weeks ago because the court actually upheld the arbitral agreement so the Kardashians won all the way and um, and now they're just um, going to wait to get these um, royalties paid I guess so um, so yeah so so in terms of uh, the best ADR tools and strategies creators can use I think I've um, you know, uh, basically explained that um, that in the 21st century, this is the most technology savvy, efficient, uh, confidential way to resolve uh, to resolve disputes. So um, one thing that is important as well is to mention that um, what about the enforcement of an arbitral award? As I just mentioned in the in the Kardashian case. The, uh, uh, the counterparty tried to um, um, challenge the uh, um, enforcement of such JAMS arbitral award. Well, uh, the New York Convention actually uh, rules the, uh, the enforcement of arbitral award in, uh, in uh, the various member states which are party to the New York Convention. And um, it's it's usually is a process which is um, very straightforward, as you need to obtain a um, uh, basically a um, a confirmation from the public court that uh, uh, in in the country in which you want to actually have this uh, arbitral award 
enforced. You just have to uh, um, uh, apply to get a, uh, a confirmation by this, uh, this the, the court of this particular country, the relevant court of this particular country, that the arbitral award uh, now needs to be enforced in this country. And this usually is a very straightforward process because a lot of courts, um, specialized courts such as the uh, Paris Court of Appeal, or, um, for example, they just 99% um, um, of the times do indeed confirm that the uh, arbitral award is enforceable, uh, in this case in France, or it could be the same for the UK. So, um, so yeah, so, so, uh, so what is great is that um, thanks to the um, you know, steady and uh, long um, application of this New York Convention on the enforcement of, uh, of um, arbitral awards, it is possible to um, enforce arbitral awards in, uh, in, uh, uh, in, in the vast majority of the times in the member states which are a signatory to uh, the New York Convention. So of course, the US is a signatory, the UK is a signatory, France is a signatory, the EU, um, representing the 27 member states uh, of the EU, is also a signatory. So, um, and, and actually on this note, the enforcement, the, the ability to use the New York Convention to enforce arbitral world has become critical since uh, Brexit has, uh, has um, um, as removed the United Kingdom as a member state of the EU on the 1st of January 2021, because the UK is a member state of the New York Convention, and therefore nothing has changed since uh, Brexit in relation to the enforcement of arbitral awards in, um, um, in, 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 in the UK. While um, the enforcement of civil and commercial judgments, so judgments handed down by public courts, um, so the, this enforcement of civil and commercial judgments in the UK after Brexit is very tricky because it, there's a legal void, there is legal no man's land, and therefore um, nobody knows at the moment exactly how to ensure that uh, a civil or commercial judgment that you obtain, say, from France or Italy or Germany, any one of the 27 member states of the EU, is going to be enforced in the UK and vice versa. So that's why at the moment in our law firm, we do advise our clients who have a cross-border relationship uh, between, um, say, the UK and one of the 27 member states of the EU, we uh, strongly incentivize them to actually put in the jurisdiction clause that the um, a particular, you know, ADR institution is going to uh, to be competent to resolve any dispute, as opposed to, for example, the uh, the court of uh, the courts of England and Wales. So. Um, this is not something you want to have in a, in a, in a cross-border commercial contract nowadays. You, you, you do want to have a, 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 um, an arbitration clause instead um, when one of the party is based in the UK and another party is based in one of the 27 member states of the EU. Otherwise, if there is a dispute, it's going to be very, very difficult to enforce the, uh, the decision. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so that touches on uh, on the the, post, the third point, which is what is the future of arbitration and mediation in the creative industries post Brexit. I guess that um, it's bright. Uh, this future is bright indeed because I can only see that there will be more and more of a gap between the public courts, which are um, uh, which are refusing to adapt to the reality of doing business in the twenty first century who still want everyone to be in court, in person, um, and refusing to do, as I said, these video court hearings or exchange with the parties 
through electronic means or electronic platforms, which means that you, you always have to check your letterbox, you know, physical location. If you don't do that, then you the, sometimes even the court clerks will refuse to send you the, uh, um, the, these papers by email. So um, so it's very tricky. And um, um, a lot of um, uh, creative companies and, uh, and entrepreneurs are losing patience with this kind of attitude, which really has no uh, justification, especially after COVID. I mean, we've seen how important electronic communication can be um, to uh, basically make our uh, working lives much more efficient. And so this is where you know, arbitration um, and mediation institutions are so important because at the end of the day, they are aware that they, give, they provide a service to creative uh, stakeholders and therefore, they want to make sure that they um, are attuned to their needs and uh, listening to their needs and requirements and, um, uh, you know, request for cutting costs and uh, improving efficiency. And this is definitely where most uh, ADR institutions are um, heading towards. They're really trying to, for example, the International Court of uh, uh, Chamber, uh, Chamber of Commerce which is uh, which which head office is in Paris, but they're also quite strong in uh, in London, the ICC. Um, it's one of the most prestigious arbitration bodies in the world, the ICC. And um, recently, I think around one two years ago, they um, published a, um, a a report on how to make to to make the most, you know, of electronic uh, communication and means to uh, to uh, facilitate the process of, uh, of case management of an arbitration and also um, doing of those you know uh, arbitration hearings online and on the back of that also how do you protect data um, from from your counterparties from your witnesses from your experts etc how do you make sure that you protect data if everything is managed online um, so um, so it's great because they're creating this, you know, code of conduct and um, data privacy policies to make sure that uh, when these um, arbitrations are um, dealt with online, they are done done on uh, on the um, a, a proprietary platform, online platform, which is uh, um, built in a way that there are many firewalls, so that uh, um, trolls or or um, hackers cannot get into the system to store the data. And so that there wouldn't be no data leak. So a lot of information is, uh, sorry, a lot of thought is uh, is put uh, into this uh, um, enhancement process and development process by these ADR institutions as a whole to provide a better, more efficient and uh, cost efficient service in particular to the creative industries. And I think this is great because this is so different from the approach uh, taken by public courts who don't give a toss at all about you know, providing an efficient and, uh, and um, um, cost efficient and uh, quick and uh, service to, to, uh, to stakeholders to, to in particular the creative industries. So I think the future indeed is, uh, is, very, um, is very bright and for, the, for arbitration mediation in the creative industries. And um, especially, as I said, in this post-Brexit era, it will become more and more relevant for cross-border uh, disputes between UK uh, companies, UK creators, and, uh, and the um, counterparties in the European Union. And um, I just wanted also to add a point about uh, the um, uh, something that I'm doing now. Oh, okay, so uh, two points, actually. The first point is that um, during the, the year, every year, there are now some arbitration weeks, which are organized by several uh, cities in the world, which are prominent in the, uh, in the arbitration space. So in March, for example, the Paris Arbitration Week took place in Paris, in, in physical uh, uh, spaces in Paris, but also on, um, on various uh, um, uh, virtual platforms. Um, I um, didn't really have the time to attend that one, but one that I attended that I really enjoyed because it was so well organized was the California Arbitration Week, which um, during a, a, a period of three or four days on a really sturdy and efficient platform, online platform, provided a lot 
of, uh, of webinar for you know, um, uh, participants and attendees from around the world to, um, to log in and for free and to attend all these uh, very um, insightful uh, panels and, uh, and um, webinars about um, the latest updates on the um, on arbitration points and uh, mediation points, etc. So, for example, the California Arbitration Week um, provide, they provided a great uh, uh, presentation, which I watched several times in replay afterwards, on the um, you know latest uh, updates in the entertainment sector, in particular the film industry, for in the uh, uh, ADR alternative dispute resolution space. Uh, that was really great. At the same time, Jams, which is also based in Los Angeles, as I mentioned before, had another panel um, during this California Arbitration Week um, about the same topic. So that was great. And, um, and also, so the Paris Arbitration Week happened a few weeks later in April 2022. And through a blog, which is called Walter Kluwer's, Kluwer's blog on uh, arbitration, I read and I learned that... Um, during the Paris Arbitration Week, there were two panels, two presentations, two webinars on um, the sports field and arbitration and mediation. So just to let you know and to give you a heads up, I'm currently uh, 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 doing some research and writing an article about yeah, esports uh, and uh, arbitration and dispute resolution um, and, and um, esports gaming um, arbitration and um, dispute resolution. And uh, as I said, it's really great to know that um, uh, even for super specialized sectors like, like sports uh, and uh, competition events, there are some uh, um, dedicated um, ADR institutions such as CAS, like Cour Arbitral du Sport, Cour d'Arbitrage du Sport. So um, the um, um, sports arbit arbitral uh, tribunal which is also based in uh, switzerland like wipo not in geneva as far as i remember i think it's in neuchatel and um and yeah and so they look at all, all the disciplinary i mean most sorry of a disciplinary dispute in relation to in particular olympic um uh, games and um and also um some of the disputes relating to commercial uh, to commercial issues in um, in um, uh, the sports um, the sports space. So now, what's going to happen with you know games and uh, and esports? Uh, so that that's what I'm going to write about in a bit. And um, um, so stay tuned for that. Yeah. So this is this is really what I had to say um, about the um, updates on how to make the most of alternative dispute resolution for the creative industries nowadays. Uh, just to let you know, uh, actually, uh, today the London, um, uh, the London um, Arbitration Week just started today. However, unlike the uh, California Arbitration Week and the Paris Arbitration Week, which were free, one has to pay £450 to attend, which is around uh, uh, 500 euros or 550 US dollars, which I think is, you know, really um, sends out the message that the London Arbitration Week is, uh, is, is still very, uh, you know, um, an elite, uh, an elite uh, event and, uh, and, um, and um, field and also uh, only trusted by the Old Boys Network, which I think is a bit of a shame because uh, this is not the message that one wants to send out in the world. So shout out to the LIDR, uh, the London Arbitration Week, and maybe they need to think about that to uh, become more democratic and also uh, better promoters of alternative dispute resolution in London. So yeah, I'm just going to check whether we have any questions. Let me have a look at our, uh, okay. So, um, Timothy is asking, um, so what do I need to do if I um, have a dispute with one of my counterparties in a commercial agreement, I'm based in the UK and I have a, a, a dispute and how do I ensure that it is resolved through arbitration? Well, first, Timothy, you need to have a look at your uh, agreement. 
which is underlying this dispute, uh, this commercial dispute, and you need to re review it and to ensure that you've got a um, an arbitration clause in this um, in this uh, commercial agreement. If you do, that's great, and uh, then you can just um, file a um, an arbitration claim with this uh, with the uh, alternative dispute resolution institution, which which is in charge of uh, result, uh, managing and uh, managing the, uh, the arbitration. Um, as I mentioned before, it is possible that in this arbitration clause set out on your on your contract, there might be a pre uh, a, a preemptive step of attempting to resolve the, uh, the, the dispute for mediation. Uh, that's a possibility. First stage, you try to do a mediation, and if the mediation fails, then you go to arbitration. So just follow the process which is set out in the arbitration clause if it's been set, it's been drafted well in your commercial agreement. If there are no uh, arbitration clauses in your commercial agreement, um, well, there are two options. Either there is a, uh, a, um, a jurisdiction clause which provides for the uh, um, competence of uh, either the English courts or um, uh, you know, a, a court in another country in, uh, in, the, in the EU. As I think you mentioned that it was, um, yeah, you mentioned that it was a contract between the UK and the EU. So um, if that is the case, that's a bit more tricky because it means clearly that the parties have decided to res resolve this, uh, any dispute via uh, the, the courts. Um, so you may uh, approach your counterparty and uh, with whom you have got the dispute and say, okay, would you uh, consider resolving this, um, this dispute by way of ar arbitration? And if the other counterparty says yes, then you can actually amend the uh, uh, commercial agreement in order to change this clause from a, uh, uh, um, a court's competence clause to a, uh, a, an arbitration tribunal clause. So um, I've not seen that very often in practice, but this is something that could be done uh, potentially. And, um, and therefore you then need to liaise, to, to liaise with your, with your, um, your lawyer to, to draft such an amendment agreement to the, uh, to the main contract to, to, to then, then get an appropriate um, clause for, for, for arbitration. Um, as I mentioned before, this, clause, uh, this arbitration clause needs to set out the forum, uh, so the physical place where the arbitration will take place, the, uh, the law under which the um, arbitration will be governed, and um, and also um, which ADR institution is going to be uh, competent for, for for the resolution of this uh, of this um, of this dispute via arbitration, and um, yeah, and if there is no jurisdiction clause, then same drill. You need to approach the council party and say, would you agree to uh, amend the commercial agreement so that we add an arbitration clause to this agreement so that we're able to resolve our dispute. Uh, VR and an appropriate ADR body. If they agree, then you can do this amendment and um, and um, uh, add it to the arbitration. Sorry, to the commercial agreement, and then you can file the uh, arbitration uh, claim with the appropriate ADR body. So that's how you would proceed, uh, Timothy. Okay, so I'm not seeing any other uh, questions. So um, I guess we're going to uh, uh, wrap up here. And um, stay tuned for our next um, article and um, um, leadership uh, thoughts on, uh, on um, gaming, esports, and uh, dispute resolution. Bye, guys. <laughs>